Hello pre-calculus student, this video is for chapter 5.2, still with unit circle and trick identities. And in the last video, I was working on uh, trying to find other five trick functions when I have tangents. And I noticed that I have a Pythagorean identities uh, of 1 plus tangent square equal to second square. So I'll use that to find second square. And um, so I would say second t is square root of 169 over 25. 169 is 13, square root is 13, 25 square root is 5. Then I'd only need to do positive. Why? Because the angle is between 0 to 2 pi, which is in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant of trig function at positive. And because of that, uh, because I know tangent, uh, I know seconds, I can actually write um, cosine t because cosine t is this reciprocal which is 5 over 13 so I know cosine I know tangent so do you know what you can do you need um, oh and if I have tangent I also can write the, the reciprocal of tangent which is cotangent right so I'll do that later but the once we have tangent and cosine we can write sine because tangent is 12 over 5 is equal to tangent t, but tangent t is equal to sine t over cosine t, right? So if I multiply cosine t on both sides, so that means tangent t times cosine t is sine t. So my tangent t was 12 over 5. The cosine t that I have earlier was 5 over 13, so that would be 12 over 13. So I'll have uh, sine t. So then the, the the reciprocal of it, I can write right away. Cosecant t would equal to 13 over uh, over 12, just the reciprocal of it. And then here, in the beginning, I actually can write co cotangent t is 5 over 12. So that is the other 5. 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So basically, you use the uh, Pythagorean identities and also tangent the uh, quotient identities. So the Pythagorean identity is very good. It's relating two trig functions. So if you have cosine, you can find sine. Uh, this related secant and tangent. If you have secant, you can find um, you can find tangent. If you have tangent, you can find secant. The same for cotangent and cosecant. Um, you you have two things like in um, uh, tangent. Tangent is related to sine and cosine, so if you have two of something, you can find the third one. And then for the other one, if you know one of them, you can find the other reciprocal. So these uh, functions are interrelated to each other in a very special way. Another identities that uh, we want to talk about is called odd and even identities. It is uh, uh, the fact that if you look at the uh, unit circle, we say uh, sine and cosine are uh, sine is uh, y, right? So that is sine t. And cosine is x, right? And if you look at the, um, look at how if you input a negative angle, it would be going down. So you will look at the first and the second, uh, the first and the fourth quadrant. x is the same. So that tells us the fact that if I input cosine t, that's equal to x. But if my input is negative t, that is equal to the same x. Right? So for cosine, if you input a positive or negative of the same number, you get the same answer. So we can actually investigate it here. Okay. Um, so if I say cosine 1, 1, okay, so if I say cosine negative 1, 1, well, it's the same. Okay. If I say cosine uh, 1.2, cosine negative 1.2, exactly the same thing, right? So what do, what do we call this kind of function where as f of x, you go to f of negative x, that's even function. So cosine is even. This is valid for any t. What about, co what about sine? And you can see that sine t is y. But sine of negative t 
is equal to negative y, right? Because the y is, you know, negative. Um, so, but negative y can be written as negative of sine t. So this is the definition of an odd function. F of negative x equal to negative f of x. So, and the same is true for other, for the reciprocal. So um, sine is odd. Sine, if you input negative, it's the same as you do a negative outside. Okay, we can do a, um, just an investigation. Um, let's say uh, 2.5, right, it's the first quadrant. And if I do, uh, oh, let's do negative sine, yeah, negative 2.5. So it is exactly the opposite of it. So if I do a negative here, the two are the same, right? So sine negative 2.5 is the same as negative sine 2.5. And it's valid for anything. For cosine is not, you don't, you don't need to do a plus and negative doesn't make uh, the the function value is the same. Um, if you input x as if it is the same as you input negative x, kind of like x square, right? If you input three, you square it is nine. You, you input negative three, you square it is also nine. So uh, for odd, it's the same for sine, secant, and also tangent. But for um, and then for and and also for cotangent. So the only two even function is cosine and secant. So these are even, the others are odd. Okay. So sine and tangent are odd, cosine is even, and the reciprocal is also. So uh, let's use this odd and even uh, uh, identity to uh, find some number. If sine t is negative 0.23, what is sine negative t? So we know that sine negative t is equal to negative of sine t, right? But sine t is already a negative number, so be negative of a negative 0.23. So that would be 0.23. Let's plug it in. Cosine t is one half. What is cosine negative t? No change, right? No t is just equal to cosine t. If it is one half, that's one half. If it's positive, it's positive. If it's negative, it's negative. Um, I, we went over this last time, so basically I think I'm ahead of uh, the the slope here in that I I use the reciprocal identities to do this uh, thing. So let's just uh, go one more time. If I want to do second pi over 10, which is not in the unit circle, I would use the calculator, the scientific calculator. And then um, there is no second. Now in here, there is second. <laughs> But they they are only uh, radian, right? So pi over ten. So if you can you want to cheat a little bit, so this one they they actually give you, but in the scientific calculator they don't have, or in the handheld scientific calculator they don't have second. So you would actually have to do one over cosine. What was it? Uh, pi over ten. Oh, I have to make sure that it is in radian, and it is pi over ten. Like that so it is 1.05146. Um, that one is also 1.05146. So if it's in radian, you can just do it in the graphing calculator. If it's in degree, you have to do it in the scientific calculator. And for handheld scientific calculator, make sure that you change your mode accordingly. Okay, so uh, last time I think I didn't finish cosecant pi over 7. So I'm going to use the scientific calculator to do it. So it will be 1 over sine pi over 7. So, uh, is it pi over 7? Yeah, 1 over sine, right? Um, that is equal to 2.3048. Oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, no. Yeah, it's radian. Right, 2.3048. I think it's wrong. The, one, the last one that we did. Um, 2.3048. 2.304x, probably forgot to change the mode to, to radian. So for radian, um, just stick with the graphing calculator. For the degree one, you have to change into degree. I think I the, in the last time, I forgot to change this. So this is all of 5.1 and 5.2. The the goal is, is uh, to create six function, six trick function. All of them are periodical. 
That means if you input some a larger number, they come back again and again. They don't go to infinity. They don't go to uh, they don't flat out as a horizontal asymptote. They repeat, and then all the six trick function has its own properties, and the properties are related by identities. These are exceptionally important. The Pythagorean identities are exceptionally important in calculus. And um, in the next um, pre-calculus class, you would uh, go into details of using this Pythagorean identity. So um, remember this identity. So you need to commit this to your memory. Okay, so we'll do 5.4 in the next video.